What about hydration? Say being hydrated during the day is that is that important in terms of facilitating a better night's sleep? Well, it's interesting because actually I encourage people. I have quite a few clients that often have to get up in the night to to wee to go to the toilet. So I actually encourage them to um, drink plenty through the day, but then stop about two hours before they go to bed. Um, otherwise, or they they may sleep well as, and in the sense that they get to sleep but they're just constantly waking up to go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, hydration, of course, and there's lots of other reasons to keep yourself hydrated, but don't be drinking a lot of liquid late at night. And where's your cutoff for caffeine? Well, that really depends on the individual because you can have what's called fast metabolizers, slow metabolizers of caffeine. Um, the half-life is anything from three to seven hours. They normally say around about five hours. Um, some people of course will say I can drink caffeine in, 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 until 10 o'clock at night and I'm fine. Um, but it's also to do with quality of sleep and not just do I actually sleep. Um, so I normally encourage my clients to stop around about three o'clock in the afternoon in terms of caffeine. What they forget is that caffeine is found in a lot of things, not just yeah. coffee and tea. And so then if they're gorging on lots of hot chocolate or chocolate um, late at night, that could equally cause them a few problems as well. What about you? How do you feel about caffeine? I think it's a balancing act between someone's individual tolerance. Mm. Um, and I think that generally the three o'clock uh, cutoff point is, is sensible for most people. Um, if someone is a slow metabolizer, you know, when we say half-life, we mean that that means that the dose only reduces by 50%. So mm. someone could still have a lot of circulating mm. caffeine that would impair sleep quality. So for some people, it could just be timing their coffee intake for, for the morning period before midday. Mm. So I think it really does depend. And I think people do have to be relatively honest with themselves and their caffeine intake to see, are they having the kind of restorative sleep that they should? And if they feel that they're sleeping an eight hour block, but still fatigued the next day, or perhaps having a couple of wakings in the middle of the night that's not bathroom related, then probably looking at their caffeine intake and seeing, well, how late am I consuming caffeine and, and could I could I bring it forward? So um, I think with, with things like coffee and tea, we have to stack up the quite well-established health benefits of, mm. of coffee and tea. When I say coffee, I mean black coffee, not a Starbucks venti frappa something. <laughs> but we have quite established health benefits to them. So yes, they contain caffeine. They also have good good health effects. So I think it's just for the individual, find out where your where your cutoff point is for yourself. But generally, a kind of two to three p.m. is absolutely mm. sensible. 